Gordon Crichton is one of the most important people in this field who studied this thing for years. He's an ex-diplomat. He's a man who speaks 10 or 11 languages. Now, Mr. Crichton, I've been studying this thing now for some weeks, and I, I find it a complete, completely bewildering mystery. There are reports of lights in the sky. There are reports of figures appearing on streets. People are seeing uh, little shapes in uh, craft. Is this something solid? Is this something real? Is it worldwide? What, what's going on? Unquestionably, something very extraordinary is going on. Unquestionably, it's a very bewildering mystery. And uh, we're glad to see that um, more and more very intelligent people are bringing their minds to bear on, on these questions. Uh, it's quite clear to me that since the end of the last war, and in particular since the first release of nuclear energy here, which I'm sure is connected with it, uh, there have been a tremendous number of very extraordinary things happening. And this is happening all over the world. Uh, we are getting reports from every corner of the globe of people who are seeing things like this. Uh, that's a, a United States Air Force sketch of the type of creature which terrorized a household of people in Kentucky one night. Uh, they shot at them with shotguns, and uh, they said that when the, shot, the, the pellets hit them, it sounded as if they were firing into a bucket. This is a little figure about three feet high. A little creature about three feet high with large ears. Which presumably comes from where? Ah, <sighs> that's the question. What do you think? I've no idea, and I'm sure nobody has. Now, in the early years, and I say that... Uh, when I say the early years, for me, that means nearly 30 years ago, because I saw one of these things in China in 1931, 41, I'm sorry, in 1941, when I was in the embassy there. I naturally didn't say there goes a flying saucer because the term hadn't been coined then. Mm. But I did think I'd seen something very extraordinary. And I never forgot what I'd seen. And some years later, I was in America and I began to see the reports in the press, heavily censored reports, some of them. Censored. And things, yes, by, because they're military reports, of things that were seen over the Western Front. Uh, and my files began then, and this house is bulging now with files. Uh, we have a lot of evidence of people being maltreated. We have a lot of evidence of cases of people who have been, uh, who've been killed, who have been burnt badly by radiation, by ray unknown forms of rays. People have been carried off and have certainly not come back again. Uh, none of this looks to me like the behavior of benevolent beings. Mm. And therefore it's not surprising that uh, you've mentioned the attitude of governments, it's not surprising the governments aren't saying anything about it. And I don't want to go on record as being critical of the governments for their view. I think it's a very serious matter. Uh, I think it is not one that one can bring to the attention of everybody. In other words, you're telling me there's a deliberate plan to keep this away from Oh, I'm people. sure. I'm sure, and I think very wisely. Because if many people knew what I know about it, from my study of it over now over many years, they they might be very alarmed. We have many cases on record of cattle being taken. Um, we have many cases on record where they've been seen taking uh, rocks, stones, vegetation, vegetation plants, exactly the things that we would do and have done on the moon already, and would do on any other planet we landed on when exploring. These do look like extraterrestrial explorers. And We've with also, intent, with people yes, intentionally that. fishing around, nosing yes, around, yes. With, with a purpose. We also have many alarming cases, alarming because we don't know the implications of them, of blood being taken from people and also semen and also over from women. Uh, there is at least one good case of uh, sexual intercourse, and I would think several, which would stand up to scrutiny. One was a farmer in the hinterland of Minas Gerais state. Uh, several hundred kilometers inland from Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, he was working the equipment on his farm. They had one tractor and his family used this in rotation. They kept this capital equipment working throughout the day, 24 hours. One would be working, the other one sleeping. His turn was at night. And he was plowing his field with his lights on at night. Now he'd seen one of these objects uh, come down on the 14th of October, 1957. And he was puzzled by this thing and he went to see what it was and every time he went after it this thing went off to a different part of the field and then it disappeared 
The next night, October the 15th, he went out alone and was ploughing when this thing came down again. And this time it came right close up to his tractor. He decided to jump out of the cab and run for it. But he was, says that he was overtaken while he was running by four smaller figures than he, and he's not a big man, who dragged him struggling into the craft, up, uh, up a gangway into the craft. Now this is his story, remember. He says that he was stripped while he was in there and given a medical. And they took samples of blood from him and washed him over with some ungent, and then took him into a separate cabin where a gas was pumped into the cabin, and he was violently sick. And then after this, he was sitting there and began to feel better. He'd been terribly alarmed, of course, and he was, he was now feeling better. And then, strangely, a door, he said, opened, and he couldn't see how it could have opened because he didn't know there was a door there. And a person came through, and it was a female, and this one was completely naked, according to his testimony. And, well, eventually he, he, he had feel so, felt so relaxed that the inevitable took place at her urging, apparently. And they then had he was, Apparently, yes, according to his testimony. And then he was shown around, the, given his clothes back again, he was shown around the, the, the craft and uh, was put down again, and he went back home with this tremendous story and he locked in his mind he was puzzled and worried and frightened by it he began to come out in spots and later at his own expense he knew that there had been uh, some stories of this sort of thing floating around in, in brazilian magazines in a cruzeiro magazine like this and he found his way to uh, the offices of uh, o cruzeiro and saw one of the editorial staff Jean martins who took him to see Dr. Lavo Fontes, medical doctor, and they took a disposition from this man, a testimony, and gave him a medical examination. And he was discovered to have a mild degree of radiation sickness. Now, how a man had picked up radiation sickness in the heart of the Brazilian hinterland, uh, ploughing a field, goodness alone knows, living a, a simple agrarian life, very simple agrarian life, goodness alone knows. Now, you have to bear in mind that these people who have these experiences are, are not readers of Flying Saucer Review. They're, they're not uh, members of Flying Saucer Spotting Clubs. They're ordinary people. And they're very often, if it's South America, they may be illiterate peasants on the slopes of the Andes. And yet, all over the world, people are having experiences which fall into a recognizable slot.